Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Miles, and I'm with the OCI Network Solutions Architecture Team. And today we're going to be configuring a policy based VPN using a Cisco ASA firewall. So you notice in our network diagram here, we have an on premise host. That host is 192.168.100.10, and that sits behind our Cisco ASA V firewall. And then the destination host is an instance in OCI. That's IP address 172.16.254.2. So those are the two hosts we'll be testing with after we've successfully built our IPsec tunnel. Now, what we want to do here first is we need to define the traffic that we desire to be encrypted. In other words, we need to define the encryption domain. Now, we do that by using an access list simple access list statement, which will define the source subnet or CIDR, but also the destination subnet, which is in OCI. So we'll do that right now. And also what we want to do is we've chosen to use um, Ike version two. So we want to enable that on our outside interface, part of that configuration. Now let's go ahead and define our phase one policy. So here's where we determine what level of integrity and um, encryption for phase one uh, should be, but also the lifetime of the tunnel. So we'll apply that. Next, we'll build a group policy. And essentially, we need to do this because we want to do two things here. Uh, basically, for policy-based VPNs, they expect real traffic to make the tunnel persistent to keep it up. So what we're going to do to help that is we're going to uh, set some uh, timings or timeout settings to be none or zero. But we're also going to specify that we're using the Ike version two protocol. So we'll add that to this group policy. So since we've chosen to use Ike version two, uh, we need to define the transform sets. So Ike version two uh, has a proposal uh, where those transform sets uh, are contained. So basically we're gonna determine the encryption level, but then also uh, the integrity for the uh, Ike version two. We're gonna do that here. Okay, so at this point, what we need to do is we need to bind uh, some of these parameters that we've already set. For instance, in the beginning, we discussed our uh, crypto uh, ACL. So we defined what traffic we wanted to have encrypted. But then also, uh, we've added uh, a policy that really uh, specifies the transform sets. So that was a proposal. So we need to take that along with you know crypto ACL and bind it together. But then also we want to specify the peer uh, gateway address. So the crypto map does that for us. And then we'll, within that crypto map, define the length of that security association or the tunnel of phase two here, how long we want that to last. So we'll add that. Okay. You notice the crypto map, we've given it a name. That's arbitrary, so you can use whatever name fits for your situation. So now we take that crypto map that we've used to bind all those parameters and we need to apply it to the outside interface in this case. Now we'll have to build a tunnel group policy. So that essentially takes the group policy that we defined earlier, ties it to this, but then also we specify uh, our peer. But along with that peer, we need to specify the pre-share key. Now we've got two options here. You can allow OCI to define that pre-share key for you in the console, or you can define one yourself. Now, if you need to go back to verify that, you can just go back to the console and look at that and copy and paste that into your configuration here. Later on, we'll look at that. So now let's build our tunnel group and get that added. Now, as we mentioned before, a policy-based VPN uh, expects to see real uh, traffic to make the tunnel persistent, to keep it up. So this is optional, but 
what we've chosen to do is to add an SLA monitor. And it's essentially having a background ping to run periodically to maintain the tunnel upstate. So we'll add that. So for our routing, uh, we're going to use just a simple static route, the default route to route uh, things out toward the outside interface. Like that. Okay, now let's have a look at what phase one and phase two of the tunnel look like currently. So crypto IP2, let's say. So our phase one is up and that's indicated by the status, it's ready. And you notice our remote gateway, the IP address at OCI and some of the parameters that we've defined as well. Now let's look at phase two. So we'll do show crypto IPsec, I say. Okay, so on the IPsec, uh, end of things for phase two, we're going to look at packets that are encrypted, and we see that. So that'll indicate the packets that are outbound uh, from our SLA monitor with the persistent ping in the background. Those have matched our policy and they're being encrypted. When our packets decrypted is zero, that's because we have yet to ping the host from our actual on prem. So we'll do that in a minute. Some other things that are noteworthy is as we look at this, we will see two essays. So we have an inbound essay, right? And we have an outbound essay as indicated here. So the IPsec essays are unidirectional. So we need two of them for packets to be encrypted both directions. So now let's go ahead and do a test ping from our on-premise host to the host instance that we have in OCI. So the OCI instance was 172.254.2. Okay, so now we've got our, our IPsec tunnel up and we're able to ping from on-premise to the OCI host. So here's the status of our IPsec tunnel as mentioned from the view of the OCI console. You can see we're just using one of the tunnels, tunnel one, and it's in the up status. Now we mentioned also that if we needed to, we could go to check what shared secret would look like in case we needed to double check it. So let's do that. I'm going to view details. Then right here, where it says show secret, do a show. And now we have our shared secret. So we can actually copy and paste this into our console if we needed to. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.